Hello and welcome to the Turn 4 Podcast. I am your host, Dan Maldonado. If this is your first time listening, welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. Let me introduce you to my co-host, Tim Reiner. Hey, Tim, hey. Hello, Dan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm What's so with awesome. the look? I, I'm just wondering why you're um, just showing your picture today. I'm like, trying to figure that out. You know, I'm going to get to that. Looks like a beautiful day uh, wherever you're at. It is a beautiful. Oh, yeah. That's my art profile picture. So, yeah. hey, yeah. Um, tonight we're going to discuss Texas and what we're looking forward to seeing there. But, of course, we'll have some other news and notes around motorsports. So, but I, I haven't turned on my camera yet because. Did you shave? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look at that. Hi V shirt. Harvey. Jack Harvey. Oh my goodness. I've had it. I've had it for like a week. That is incredible. <laughs> it looks good on you. Oh Thanks. my goodness. Right? Did we'll you send it to you or did you go out and you went out and bought it, huh? I went out and bought it. Awesome. It almost I'll take a freebie if somebody wants to throw me one, of course, but yeah, I got nothing. I'm just I'm all gray today, and I know it's bright and sunny there, so you're excited about that. Yes. Um, so it kind of looks like a cycling shirt, though. It does. It does, and it's kind of that same fabric, too. Is it? Okay. Yeah, that same material. Yeah. Well, heck, when we go to Indy, I hope you get right into their garage I'm, area wearing that. I'm and... just going to walk in. You know me, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Walking like you own the place. <laughs> it's awesome. So no shaving, though. I see. I'm shaving. never going to shave, dude. I you know. already know that one. I know. Okay. So, hey, um, uh, we had some write-ins last week, the podcast, so I just want to kind of get a, a quick few. rundown on those. Yeah. So we appreciate that as always, and I'm going to start out in no particular order, but uh, calling Scott McLaughlin Scoot is kind of annoying. Understood. I'll do my best. We heard it from a couple people, not just one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> So Man, we thank I everybody. Really like it. I, I really like it too. So I guess we're going to have to retire it. So yeah, we, we thank, we're thankful for the feedback for sure. We are. We are. So, and uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks to uh, Liz from Australia. Liz, uh, to be honest with you, I was kind of worried because this bike was at the bike shop and I was worried I wasn't going to get it back. So I said, you know, we got to yeah, get it back. Yeah, she likes the bikes. Mine's yeah, yeah. really showing on the show, but yeah. yours is in full view. Yep. So Richard. It fitted, right. It's all fitted and ready yep, to go. It's all fitted, ready to go. Richard, Mark, our original YouTube super fan, of course, Craig, um, someone who goes by YKPR. I just want to uh, totally agree with you. Polo is becoming the silent assassin. No nonsense and limited flair, uh, just driving to the front. So I love it. Hey, Tim, did yeah. you see the ratings from St. Pete? I did hear about him. And I think we mentioned on our show that you know, the attendance was really good, but we're talking TV. And I know that comes out obviously afterwards. And that was really good. St. Pete was the largest non Indy 500 audience in 10 years with over 1.4 million viewers across NBC platforms. I assume when they say that that's NBC network, as well as uh, Peacock. Yeah. This is a 53% increase over last year's opener at Barber. Um, Good stuff for the series, is it not, Tim? It's really good for the series, and I was excited to see that and read that. Um, I did, however, check, and I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer here, but I did check the NASCAR ratings, and we still got a long ways to go, folks. Yeah, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be, you know, too exuberant. I think if we can sustain, you know, the viewership, then that would be great, and then look to grow it as um, years come by here. But uh, I think they were at 3.7 million people or something like that. So their rating was better than um, IndyCar, which it, it, it's always been, but I'd like to set the benchmark pretty high, but I'm excited about where it was, but you know, yeah, I think we could always do better. Yep. Going up, going up. Um, IndyCar hosted a rookie test session at Texas the week following St. Pete. I, I find this whole concept of this interesting. I, I don't, and what I'm talking about is this in-season testing. I don't know why there isn't more testing in the off-season. I, I mean, it seems to me like with the long break between seasons, you know, finishing 21 and then picking up in 22, there's a pretty big break there. We always talk about this business is about exposure. So I don't know why they don't do more exposure. But of course, the first point we make here is that their TV 
viewership was up 53%. So it just continues to prove I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah, and I, I, I would imagine they're doing it in between races because the teams are all assembled already and they're already on the road. So you might as well do some testing while you're out and about and you're going to Texas and you're going to be there in a f- next week anyway. So why don't yeah. you, you go there and get uh, things tuned in? So, yeah, I don't know either. Um, I'd like to see more off season stuff going on, but uh, it's just not in the cards right now. Yeah. So rookies had an opportunity to test at uh, Texas and we had uh, six of the rookies were, Represented there, Kyle Kirkwood took the top time at a two nineteen point eight. Um, Roman Grosjean had the fastest time with a two eighteen point seven. It was the fastest time without a toe. Yeah. So uh, Kirkwood for AJ Foyt Racing took the top time in general. Um, following on down the list there, Kirkwood, Ilot, Grosjean, uh, Malukas, De Francesco, and Lundgaard, which I was a little surprised at that Christian Lungard was um, sixth out of six. So mm-hmm. there was supposed to be an engine test at, at Texas with both Honda and Chevy, but um, it was canceled because it was too cold. Now there, there's certainly a combination of words not often composed when talking about the state of Texas. Mm-hmm. Tim, did you know that there was a minimum combined air temp and track temp? I did not know. But I, I do remember being at Nazareth many, many moons ago. It was April race. It snowed the night before and they did not race. They canceled it or moved it to the following week or whatever it was. So obviously if there's, you know, snow on the ground, you're not going to do it. But I didn't know there was a minimum temperature. Do you know what those temps, those minimums are? I do. So those temps, so minimum track and ambient combined has to be a hundred degrees or greater oh. for them to run. Well, good thing they're not trying to run here in Michigan this time of year because they'd never get on track. That's right. That's just uh, why they do the schedule the way they do it, of course. A few days later, the Chevy teams did manage to get out on track with Scott McLaughlin. Managed to uh, take the top, top spot there, uh, running 155 laps. Will Power, his Penske teammate, had a crash. Uh, he was reported as okay, but he didn't go back out. Joseph Newgarden, who had... Uh, forgettable race at St. Pete had the fastest solo time. So that's good news for new garden who uh, will assuredly be looking for a quick rebound from St. Pete. Yeah, definitely. I, I, it's, it's a great sign for new garden and you know, they'll, they'll come out next week and really put some laps down. So it'll be uh, fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, more IndyCar news uh, in reference to the new engine that was supposed to come next year. The series announced that they're going to delay that one more year to 2024. The reason cited is the ongoing global supply chain challenges. The hybrid side of the system is a common component and not a Chevy or Honda proprietary uh, component. It's coming from a German company. I believe it's pronounced Mali or Malay. Um, that's one reason. Tim, do you know uh, where I'm going with this though? Uh, I believe I do. So yeah, I am going going with this, that the series is giving an opportunity to Toyota to join the series as I believe they are. Um, plus there is growing momentum behind the need for a new chassis to go along with new engines. What, what did you tell me the other day about the chassis? These 10-year-old DW12s are very unique in that. They can race, obviously, in the series, but they can also do classic racing. Yeah, vintage racing. Vintage, yes. So vintage racing. So they are that old. um, And they have some bolt-on parts, as we all know. And it's time to upgrade, in my opinion. I know they're looking at it, but I find it very... I'll be very surprised if it comes out in 2024. I think it's still a few years after that, like they originally planned. It's possible. I, I I think there's some momentum around it. There's a lot of discussion that took place uh, this last week with the teams. I, I Whatever they decide to do, whenever they decide to do it, I just hope the cars look sexy, right? Because I still think that those those 90s era champ cars are still the best looking Indy cars that, that ever existed far, out there. By far. And of, and of course, with Roger Penske overseeing, overseeing the series, I'm, I'm certain that the chassis will have a sexier shape. Yeah. I think so too. And hopefully there's multiple chassis. Yep. And I know that's 
hey, far fetched, but yep. Continuing along this high V, right? V. Did you place your online order by the way for groceries? I did not. We don't have a high V near me. It doesn't Bring it matter. On. Bring it on, high V. What does that mean? Matter. You can order from anywhere. They'll ship it to you. For real? Yes, it was. They, that's what they advertised during the race during St. Pete. I had no idea. Yeah, just scan the QR code. Is that the QR code? Right I think so, too? yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> can you get close enough to the camera or no? I don't, I don't know. I don't we think shouldn't so. do this on air. Hey, but I'll do this. So uh, big news continues out of Iowa, which is, of course, the high V. Uh, race announced that Tim McGraw and Florida Georgia line will play on Saturday. Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton will play on Sunday. Will perform on Sunday. Uh, concerts are taking place before and after the the race on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. This is so cool, dude. This is so cool, right? Ray Hall, hy V, and IndyCar are doing it right, I, as far as I'm concerned with with what trying to make this Iowa race not just a race weekend but an event. Yeah, I've seen uh, arguments both ways where it's good and it's bad, and I I, I think it's good. Uh, High V is all in, and that's yes, they are really surprising that that's that far all in. And I even went to their website to see who their owners were and all that to see what affiliation they may have with racing in the past, and I didn't see anything. So if anybody knows, then uh, please let us know. But I they are totally in, totally, totally, which is good to see. Are they the next? Um, a uh, uh, title sponsor of the series who knows right because those tend to go in and out it was verizon it's ntt who's been there a few years i'm not saying ntt's leaving but man with all the activation and everything they have going on who knows sky's the limit yeah it's good stuff i it it's it's great to see the high v and everything that they're doing coming in here so so dan for your your sake do you go to the race for those other things or what do you mean when you attend an event, is that important to you as a, as a fan and we're fans, right? So we can, you know, say, how does that impact us going to events? Does it change what you would do or do you know you like it? Uh, it, it wouldn't change it for me, but I'm, I'm less of a casual fan and more of a yeah. super fan. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to go to Iowa, you're going to spend the money. You're going to get two races Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. it's it would be nice to have something in between i guess the only thing i have to compare it to and i don't remember who it was but when i went to usgp at coda um a few years ago there was a there was a concert saturday night after qualifying we didn't stay for um we didn't have tickets for i i or i don't even remember if we needed extra tickets or side tickets for that but we didn't stay for that and okay. it, it it wasn't it wasn't part of our motivation to go to the race it was really just to go see go see the race yep would this this change it no i mean i'm just thinking about you and i going to mid ohio a few years ago right we drove down on saturday we you know got to the track reasonably early on sunday so we could walk around walk yep. into the garage area like we owned it and um <laughs> you know, but um don't, don't tell anybody that right right we tend to but, do that but it's like there was nothing going on there yeah, I, you know that would have been nice, right? I think if that were the case at Mid Ohio, it, it probably would have made a difference there. But because there's really nothing else to do around there, that is true. Yeah, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I've never been to Newton, Iowa, so I, I mean, maybe that's right. Good thing there, where it it gives you a little extra something to do. So, yeah, yeah. So on to Texas, the Expel 375, which is a 600k race over 248 laps. I love that race distance, by the way. IndyCar has raced at, at TMS since 1997, COVID notwithstanding, of course, because they did miss a race in 2020. This is the 35th race for IndyCar at Texas. Tim, do you know who the first IndyCar winner was in Texas Motor Speedway? I do not. Which means you also don't know what's notable about that race. It was Ari Leindyke. Was it? Yes. And this was the race that Ari got smacked by AJ Foyt uh, because of oh. some uh, controversial race finish involving Billy Boat and uh, and Ari Leindyke as well. So um, there you have it. A little bit of history. And do you have any idea why they call it the Expel 375? I'm, I'm so confused. Yeah, totally. You do know why? Pretty much 375 miles. 
600 kilometers. Is that what that is? Yes. Dude, for real? Yes. That's what, that's what it is. Trust me. I work with a lot of Canadian folks. And so I kind of know the conversion every once in a while. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, that's why it's the 375. 375 miles is actually 603 kilometers, but I think they just rounded up. Look at you. Nice. Well, I have a computer in front of me. I'm not kidding you. I had no idea. Like, I guess, I, I guess, oh, well, there you, you have it. Do you remember from last year what Expel does? I'm a very simple. Yes. That's uh, like paint uh, protection, window film, and, and things like that. So yeah, I'm assuming uh, the car will also be Expel because I know last year it was Expel for, I think it was New Garden. So I don't know if they're bringing that back or if they're just the title sponsor for the race. But yeah, I would expect I to see the, the Expel car there, right? I would expect to, and I would think you'd be tweeting it if you were bringing it, but yeah, I've yeah. not seen Team Penske do that. I haven't seen that. Hey, before we get into storylines, there was one other bit of IndyCar news that came up um, more recently is J.R. Hildebrand will be back as the oval specialist in the number 11 Foyt Chevy, normally driven by Tatiana Calderon. Mm -hmm. so welcome back, J.R. Yeah, so he'll be there in Texas, right? Yeah. Hey, I, you know, of course I, I give you the notes, I type them out and I, you know, we, we use them in the share drive there. So you can see who I've got, uh, for my projected winner, but I want to know who your projected winner is for Texas. Yes. Uh, man, I'm actually going to go with a Ganassi car. Uh, I think Ganassi has always shown fairly good strength at the ovals. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think Dixon's going to pull this one off. There you go. I like it. I like an early win for Scott Dixon. Yeah. I like that's that. Where that's where I'm going. Um, I I'm, see who you have. I'm going Will Power. Even though I'm wearing Jack Harvey's shirt, I'm going Will Power. Will Power. And I'm also going Will Power on pole. Yeah, I did see that. That's a win from pole. You got any thoughts I, on pole? I got an Andretti car on pole. Um, and we're going to put. You do? Uh, yeah. Who? Rossi. Wow, Ross is, Ross is going to come out and he's going to take the pole and Napa is going to be up front for a little bit, but they'll have some issues and, you know, we'll get uh, good old uh, Scott Dixon up there for the win. Interesting. I like that. Rossi. I'm, I'm wow. I got to write that down. Yeah. Even though I, I know I won't forget it. Yeah. you won't. And who's your winner? Who you say? Oh, Scott Dixon. Scott. Yeah. There you go. I should, you know, aren't I too. normally the, the Honda guy? Yeah, you normally are, but yeah. I think you heard and we talked about, you know, Chevy power and the drivability. So maybe that'll translate to the track. And I feel like they got their fuel mileage figured out. So yeah, I agree I, with that. Right. And you watch practice and you saw that they were super fast. So yeah, practice means nothing to manage. But I know because Will crashed in practice. So and you got him pole and winner. That's from crash and it all out, man. Go big or go home. Hmm. So there's four storylines that I'm watching for Texas. Uh, the first one is the rookies, right? All of them. We mentioned them earlier in this show, six of them, including, but I'm going to add Jimmy Johnson and Roman Grosjean to that. Cause if you recall, this will be JJ's uh, first run on an oval in an Indy car. Mm -hmm. And Grosjean drove at gateway last year, but not on a super speedway with, you know, 25 or so other combatants around him. Do you I remember think, that race? Um, on, on track. The only thing I remember is that's the only turn four podcast I've done solo. And it's oh. also our worst performing. <laughs> show. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm surprised it's not the best performing one because I'm not sure I add a ton to every show. So, but heck, Hey, the, the listeners will tell us, right? Yeah. Um, so, I know that most listeners, but as well as a, a lot of people around IndyCar are very, very hopeful for Jimmy Johnson making this oval debut. Where do you think, how, how do you think this is going to go for him? Um, I think it's going to go well. I'll just put it, I, I honestly, What's like, well I, though, I mean, uh, cause honestly, 13th, 14th place would be well. Yeah. I, I guess I'm sort of on the fence of whether it'll be a good outing or not. I'm almost convinced that he'll get washed up in some dirty air and take it high and just brush the wall. Yeah. And that'll sort of uh, put a hamper on his day. So 
Um, I'd like to say he's going to do well, which I said initially, but that's my, that's my thought. And, and the reason I, and I know he's got a ton of oval experience, but I think it's, it's obviously different going yeah. from NASCAR to IndyCar. And I think if you don't know about the dirty air, the dirty air could catch you out real quick. Right. I, I do now that you mentioned it, remember gateway from last year, um, with Grosjean and Grosjean was putting that car in places that most people wouldn't. You're absolutely right. right. Yeah. Or hadn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. And it was stepping believe, out. Yeah. And he I, was catching it. Yes. I don't believe he's going to have that luxury at Texas. No, Cause I think that if you get faster. into that, that PJ one, which is also one of the storylines uh, to follow for next week. If you get into that PJ one, I think it's proven there's no IndyCar grip up high on that application, which means he's, he's going to, if Roman gets impatient and tries to drive around people like he did at, at gateway, he's going to drive it right into the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope he doesn't actually, I'm, I'm very, very hopeful that the racing is better than that. And that, uh, IndyCar's tweaks to the downforce and, and the format of the, or the setups of the car will help lead to a little bit more, um, racing action yeah. out there because otherwise I, it's just going to be follow the leader and that's yeah, why that, willpower on pole willpower is in the in in victory lane yeah i hope it's a clean race they're they're going way way fast to be hitting the yeah. wall so um, i know they can get out of it a little bit but you don't want to see anybody get injured or anything like that so i'm hoping it's clean everybody keeps their nose uh clean and that uh, no one uh, slaps the wall but we'll see what happens yeah so uh Storylines, rookies, the PJ1, uh, third storyline here out of four is Chevy, drivability and fuel mileage. You touched on it. They showed a remarkable ability at at St. Pete, more so than they have shown over the last couple of years, for sure. Um, so, you know, can they continue to take it to Honda? The power's there. The power's always been there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, drivability. I don't know how much drivability matters on an oval right because you you would think that it's mostly flat around here so you know drivability but fuel mileage for sure fuel mileage is a big thing absolutely yep um final for me um crowd i like this track and you know historically we used to see huge crowds Mm -hmm. at texas um expel is a texas-based company if i remember i saw it this morning i think it's san antonio okay so hopefully, you know, Expel will have some guests there as, as well as, you know, the other series sponsors, whoever can get folks there and get folks into the seats, but as well as paying crowds, right? People who, who pay to be their fans like you and I. I, I look for a big crowd. I hope for a big crowd. So um, I believe this is the last year of that current deal. So I, I would like to see you know, this race take off. And uh, to me, it's, it is one of the better ones. It's nice to see a big oval before Indianapolis as well. Mm-hmm. I agree. It, it gives everybody an opportunity, especially Jimmy Johnson, Grosjean, you know, people at these rookies, yeah. um, a shot at a, at a big oval. So, so that is, um, that race is on the 20th, right? And it's yep. in the afternoon. It's not a night race. Okay. That's right. It's at noon. This is earlier than normal. And I believe that the the intent there was to get people out of that Texas sun and into something a little bit more, um, you know, agreeable weather wise. You know, it should be yeah. it should be beautiful. It should be a real beautiful spring day. Yeah. Um, in Texas. Uh, now, have you been early. to the track, Dan? I have not. I've 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 seen it when we were in Texas last year um, mm-hmm. for vacation because we stayed in and around the Dallas area. Okay. I saw it. We were we I went to a Bucky's. If you've never been to a Bucky's, Bucky's mm-hmm. is unbelievable. So I went to a Bucky's, but it was right there. Um, the Bucky's I went to was right there by uh, the Speedway, and then we went off to see a friend of mine who I I work with. So yeah, it was okay. a lot of fun. Yeah, it's cool. It's a nice place. Um, I like the the condos that are right there. Um, I was there a couple times, I believe, at least for once what? Or twice for the race. I was there for work. Yeah, I was working. I was. Uh, we were doing a sponsorship evaluation. Mm-hmm. back for the Indy Racing League when it was the Indy Racing League. And we were talking to fans and asking them about, you know, do they know who the sponsorship, who the sponsors were? Does it change your buying habits? Um, picking up all that information. It was a company that uh, I worked for out of uh, Newport, Rhode Island, which is a wonderful place if you get to visit. 
There you go. Interesting. So yeah, walk down that. memory lane. That's how I got to a lot of these tracks is through that organization. So yeah. Um, Nazareth makes me jealous that I that you've been there because that that's one I'll never get a chance to go, obviously. Um yeah. but I always wanted to. I loved Nazareth. I used to like yeah. I used to like racing Nazareth on IndyCar Racing 2 for PC back oh, in the my goodness. whatever that was. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah late no, 80s, early 90s, whatever that was. Yeah. Race. Yeah. I wasn't working that one. I was just there enjoying my time. So right. Hey, moving on to IMSA. Team Penske announced they're entering an LMP2 in the 12 Hours of Sebring, which takes place at the same time as Texas. Um, and that sponsor will be Penske Logistics. This entry uh, is the one that Penske will use to stretch out and train their personnel and prep for the Porsche GTP program next year, okay. formerly known as LMDH, um, where they'll also participate in the 24 hours of Le Mans. This is the first time the captain's been to Le Mans since 1971. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. When I did these notes, I knew the two drivers. It was David Hobbs and somebody else. There you go. And somebody else? Yeah. My memory laid open in front of the listeners, Timmy. (laughs) Oh, that's a bummer. I really like the livery. I read a comment on Twitter. I think I just liked it. Yeah. Um, But it looked really sharp. Yeah, and it it's on track. It's and, a... and we've seen that before, right? I think we've seen that that livery in on in the on the Indy car before. Yeah, I, I think we've seen that there. I so. went looking for it to to put side by side comparisons, but I didn't find it. But yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Um, so I already mentioned the 12 hours of Sebring, which takes place next week, is in conflict with Texas. Um, we did already speak about the IndyCar regulars who would have normally been participating in that. I won't rehash that here, but what I just want to say is, um, you know, first of all, I'm looking forward to that race because as you know, you and I are both big sports car fans. We do like the IMSA product. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope that IndyCar and IMSA can coordinate schedules a little better in the future. I think that the two series are complementary to each other. And I think, uh, you know, scheduling is to their benefit. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a great weekend to watch a lot yeah. of motorsports because you have Formula One kicking off too, is my understanding. Is that right? Yes. There so you go. you've got Bahrain. Yeah, you've yeah. So you've mm-hmm. got Sebring here. You've got Texas, and you have the Formula One event, which will be interesting to see. And may have no reason to get out of bed. You're just right. Bring me, just... just bring me snacks and and my Mac. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I yeah, need. Totally. Yep. So, a day full of uh, racing, which would be yeah. awesome. Hey, speaking of Formula One, I before we get into that, Tim, do you do you watch Drive to Survive? Do I watch Drive to? No, well, you know, a little bit, not not a ton. I've seen a few of the episodes here and there. So, have you seen I, any of the current season? Yeah. So I, my you son do, is watching have? it, so I popped okay. in. That's the only reason I've seen it. All right. I, have okay. You, have you watched it yet? I am. I'm on episode five until I just shut it off to come down here and do this show with you. Oh, all right. Yeah. So um, the first thing I want to say is, yes, it's a show. It's meant mm-hmm. to be entertaining. Is some of that embellished? Very likely. Mm-hmm. But I like to see the behind the scenes, right? And I don't necessarily take some of it too seriously. I don't take some of it too seriously. The second thing I'll say is Haas and the Mazapons? Mazapons? Yep. Wow. Again, it, is some of this dramatized? Probably, but they can't be dramatizing that specifically, right? The the Haas mm-hmm. team and uh, and that driver and his dad that those interactions and those conversations that's that's crazy. That is crazy. Well, Obviously, they won't have to deal with that anymore this year. Yeah, I, the thing that surprises me in that show is the foul language. There's a lot oh, yeah. of it. Which you could I, have a drinking game on the F word there and be, you wouldn't even make it through the, the episode. I know <laughs> my son's watching it. I'm like, Oh, really? yep. And then, I, I, then I'm obviously thinking corporate wise and corporate sponsors. And do they really want their brand represented with an F bomb here and an F bomb there? And I'm like, I, I, it's obviously done great things for formula one in the U S and it's picked up viewership. So who am I? I, I'm not here to criticize it. I just, I'm just a little surprised that they would keep all that in there. And I know it's Netflix, so anything goes, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be censored, but 
I guess that's just how it goes. But your car guys, car guys, I guess typically will speak like that if you want. Right, right, right. Um, we were talking about the Mazepins and in, in uh in the Haas team. So given some of the global situation that's happening out there, Nikita Mazepin will not be contesting uh this year in the Haas, but instead will be replaced by Kevin Magnuson. And he's gonna be um Magnuson be racing on what's described as a multi-year deal. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting to me because he was obviously there as a teammate to Roman Grosjean um, when neither one of them were renewed, right, in favor of Nikita and, and Mick Schumacher. Um, he has also been on record saying that, you know, he was, and I'm paraphrasing, worn out on, you know, riding around at the back of the grid. Would you have gone back to Haas? Hold on. So Magnuson was scheduled to race for Ganassi at Sebring next weekend. Mm -hmm. He was also signed to the Peugeot supercar program. Now both of those go away. He'll be racing in in Formula One again for Haas. Would you, with all of that, would you be going back to Haas? On a... If it because it's multi-year a multi-year deal, because it's a multi-year deal, I think I would. I think I would go and do that if that's what your dream is and that's what you want to do. I would go back to the team. I don't think they left on quote unquote bad terms. No, certainly. You know, not. when I see um, Twitter say he's he was fired and now he's brought back, I think fired is a little harsh term, and I think it's more yeah, of, just not signed, right? I don't yeah, know if that was fired, I, right? Yeah. So I and. And so you can play it out to make it look like, why would you ever go back and do that? But like I say, and everything I do, don't burn your bridges um, yeah. when you leave. Um, and, and obviously he didn't and he's back. And I saw a lot of the folks, including uh, Roman Grosjean saying he's super excited for Kevin to be there. So I think it's a good environment over at Haas, even though there, there are a lot of F bombs uh, <laughs> that come out of that camp. But um, I think at the end of the day, <laughs> it's a it's a new t- it's a it's a new chassis i i think they're gonna do well they should do well i know their practice has not been very good but from kevin's perspective i i, I think it's the right call i would totally do it i think on the last day of 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 preseason testing i think magnuson had the fastest time um on that day Everybody's you know, dialed back a little bit. It was cooled it's, off, it's right? It was in it was in different circumstances. Not not to you know discount it by any stretch, but it, it's just you know. So that's 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 good news. I, I wish nothing but good news there. I think that um, Magnuson will be a good teammate to Mick Schumacher. I think his experience, his maturity, uh, he'll bring some um, calmness to that side of the garage. That you know, mm-hmm. again, the embellished entertainment known as Drive to Survive was showing you. Um, if that's even halfway true, then yeah, for sure. Magnuson's going to bring some calmness to that side of the garage. So mm-hmm. good for them. Yeah. I don't know would what you, I would have would done. Would you do that. it? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Move, probably not. Move on. Yeah. Okay. I would have moved on. But he's already, so I've never he, done that though. But right. He's already I've never raced in formula one. He's already sampled any car. So. And I think he could have got it. And it was hard for him. Yeah. He had, a, he had a hard time coming to grips with the car. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a hard for choice. Him. Yeah. Hey, Colton Herta, he was signed by McLaren, right? In what's described as a development deal. Now, if I had to take my guess, what I would say, I think this is Zach Brown, friend of Michael Andretti, helping Andretti prepare Herta uh, for a place on the F1 grid should should F1 approve Andretti Global as the 11th team? Mm -hmm. You agree? I agree. What do you think this is going to do to Colton's IndyCar season? Nothing. It's just going to make him better. Think so? Yeah, I think it's going to make him better. Um, One foot in, one foot out. Mm, You know, I'm not a fan of that. Well, I know you're not, but you got to spread your wings. And I think that's the time you don't go to a practice squad. And if you need the the points to get in there, right, you got to do something. And this seems like a, a reasonable way to do it. 
Um, I think some of the regulations though, with F1 changed to allow some younger drivers to come in and, right. and so they needed to fill those spots. And I think it made sense to have Colton do that as well. So I think it was a combination of, of things that led to it, not just he needs his, you know, points in order to be in formula one. It was a combination of the rule change too. So, um, I don't think it's going to have an impact on Indy is IndyCar season. I think he's still going to perform to the highest level and we both have him winning the championship. So we do. Let's, let's hope but this was that. before this. So you'd pull him out of the top spot then. I don't know. I, I think, you know, I, you would think they're not sending him to the middle East. They're not sending him to, you know, Asia, so to speak, right. That his, mm -hmm. his time running in FP one will be, in the European races, but still, right. He's going to have to go to Europe, get acclimated to the time, drive that car, get acclimated to driving that car, and then come back stateside, get ready to drive in the IndyCar race, whatever it, it may be. Right. I mean, they'll figure it out. They're smart people and they're not necessarily, you know, loading up, you know, main one on Delta airlines like you and I are right. So yeah. it's going to make it, it's going to make a difference in, in, in some of that logistically, you know, it'll help them out. So yeah. I wish him all the luck in the world. I, I, I would love to see him in formula one. I think he would shake it up there. Um, I, you know, I want to see Andretti global in formula one, cause I think mm -hmm. they'll shake it up there as well. Yeah. Um, but I, the one foot in one foot out thing, I I'm not, I'm just not, I'm not a fan of. I think it's good. I don't yeah. I don't have any, any reason to doubt that they're he's still going to have a great season? Did you realize that he's twenty-one? He's young. I know. Man, it's a young kid. Hey, uh, Formula. Continuing on Formula One news, Daniel Ricardo tested positive for COVID while at the Bahrain test. Uh, all the best to Daniel for a speedy and thorough recovery because he needs a strong start to this season. He did have a win last year; it was a great win, but otherwise, he he. Didn't was have the, a season that he really yeah. expected to. That was the episode I saw. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Emla. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and McLaren's look good in testing, which means they have an opportunity to come out of the box strong and really take it to these other teams. Mercedes, I don't know if Mercedes is necessarily sandbagging or if they really are struggling. To me, it looks like they really are struggling. I keep up pretty closely to that, the race, you know, the mm -hmm. podcast, their YouTube channel and, and, uh, and their website and things. And they hedge a little bit too, by saying it could be a little sandbagging, but you know, some of that stuff does look like they're struggling a bit. Yep. And I think they are. I think um, they are too. So I think that McLaren will definitely have an opportunity to come out strong, but they need both guys to come out strong. They need both Daniel and Lando to come out strong and just guns blazing. And what happens if Daniel doesn't do well this year? Given I, what we just talked about with test driver with uh, Colton Hurt out there. So if Andretti Global doesn't come around, Daniel Ricardo doesn't have a good season, who's in that seat next year? I don't know that it would be uh, Colton Hurt. Uh, I there's a number of drivers and I can't, you know, stuff of man Dorn, I think is, is in their reserve Academy. I can't remember who else is there, but don't forget they have Pato award in IndyCar as well. Racing for yeah, that's that good team point. already. That's a good point. Right. So what do I think happens to Daniel Ricardo? Believe it or not. I think Daniel has a great shot at going back to Red Bull in place of Sergio Perez as as uh max's wow. teammate i think he's got a good shot at that why wouldn't red bull want him back i i don't know why they wouldn't want him back so I, yeah uh, and they've historically you. not done that mm -hmm. but they've also historically not put anybody in that seat that's not been as part of their family right they're mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it but perez is in that seat yeah so it's possible well, back there's some the crazy whole, speculation for you. I know, but back to the Zach Brown thing, he's always been adamant that the series would be better with a with the U.S. driver in there. Yeah. So it's possible, but I get Pato's uh, in line too. So that that makes yeah, he's already there. Sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Soul's hurt. Soul's hurt now. Yep. Yeah. He's already there. So good luck, right? Yeah. One's going to push the other. Yep. So we'll see. I, I've enjoyed it. I, I've enjoyed watching the Drive to Survive. I'll finish it this this afternoon, right? And um, How many it's Sunday while we're taping Seven? this one for Monday's episode. I don't know. Eight. I usually, I always think eight, okay. but I don't know. Yeah. Um, finally, NASCAR, um, David Gilliland Racing's Arca Haller was involved in a crash in Longview, Texas, while en route to Phoenix. One person was killed. He was the driver of the hauler, Stephen Stotts, age 54. Um, John uh, Zaverl, 38, Michael Mazel were 45, were passengers in the hauler. Um, they were transported to Christus Good Shepherd Medical Center in Longview. Uh, both were treated and released. So thoughts and prayers to the family of Mr. Stotts and, and David Gillow and racing. Hate to hear that. Yep. It's unfortunate for sure. And that wraps up this episode of the turn four podcast. Be sure to subscribe using your favorite podcast app. Continue to engage with us on social media. We love it. Uh, good or bad or otherwise, we want to hear what you have to say. Also, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter of this show. All links in the show notes. Until next time, we'll see you. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone.